Hey y'all, I'm continuing my series in earth-based practices and what the Amanita is teaching me about what it means to be whole, human, working with your biology, and all of the things that are involved in our anxiety. And that while Amanita can go in and heal physiologically what's going on, your toxicity, your layers of brokenness, and the negative emotions associated with all of the things that have happened to you, the Amanita absolutely is also saying, but you got here for a reason. Your society is broken and you've lost your connection to things that make you mentally healthy. So there's a lot of those things. I talk about them in detail in my book, Dosing Amanita and What to Expect. But I'm trying to also teach you in videos, they just don't do well. Some of you stick around and you wanna know more about what it truly means to stop your anxiety and be healthy and not have to worry all the time about your daily mental health. And are you gonna be able to go to some activity? Cause you never know what you're gonna get. What I've learned about Amanita is that the mental health thing, you can be regulated pretty consistently, but it requires just an incredible amount of work to heal a lot of the past and the trauma. So just keep in mind, I'm like on year five now in this healing journey from being suicidal and on benzos to where I am today. And a lot of it will involve your, your privilege, your access, your history, the support that you've got, financial ability, uh, access to the, to the medicine where things are legal, not legal. I get that. I'm saying aside from the medicine, aside from your therapy and ability to heal the trauma there are so many things we can be doing to support our mental health outside of those things if you haven't seen the videos where i talk about these earth-based practices and the solstices and equinoxes it's in the same playlist and it's a must so please also watch that what i want to talk to you about now are drum circles and the importance of drum circles as a human and how to find them in your area. And if you can't find one, how to make one in your area. But because we have opposable thumbs, we're able to create music. We have a part of our brain that actually thinks, hey, you should make music. Whereas other animals don't do that. Physically hit things to make music in time. I think, you know, some birds are able to keep a decent amount of time with their beak on things, but it's because they're watching the humans do it and they're getting the idea, oh, hey, I can do it. But for the most part, we're the animals that want to actually create rhythmic sound on a regular basis. So much so that like, I mean, look at the world of music today for humans. It's a very important part of being human. And the reason that we love music so much and try to recreate it is because it is part of our practice as being humans from millions of years ago, as we're first creating art, that music and art, along with the rotations of the planetary bodies and the moon around us, all of this using entheogens, all of this advance together, so you can't separate it. So drumming and drumming in circles and drumming together as humans is just an absolutely important part of being human. I am not going to be able to put it to words and explain to you the importance of it very well. It's something you're going to have to do to go, okay, I get it. Okay, I'm getting cold. Let me go get clothes. Better. So, Something that you may not have actually given thought to is the concept that we used to understand and practice cohesiveness as a community. Because before cities, that was how we survived. And the further you go back in our history, the more important cohesiveness within our community was. Every person in our community was important. They had a job and a role that they filled, but also there were connections and liaisons within that small community, but also if there was a problem within that community, a problematic person, they could disrupt the balance of the entire community and harm people. 
and that clearly is a problem. So making sure that everybody was sort of vibing on the same page and that issues and problems were kept to a minimum and that if there was an issue, it was worked out and fixed. And we did that by being very close to each other and working ritualistically on a regular basis. And we did that through the fire. The fire, the hearth was the center of everything sitting around that fire then and playing drums every time there was a solstice and an equinox or an important occasion was not only a cohesive activity, but when you use Amanita muscaria in this way, an incredible amount of healing happens, but something that is otherworldly happens. And it's what I travel and do when I hold ceremony is I, I am bringing these practices back, this cohesiveness and what happens when we come together and play drums and use Amanita, that something very spiritual is happening. And let me explain to you a little bit about drums. I'm a drummer, drum kit, like traditional drummer, rock and roll music, drum kit, drummer, right? And about 15 years I've been playing drums. And one of the early things that I had to experience, learn and understand was there's this idea that when you're playing drums and you have to play something rhythmic repeatedly for a long period of time, then what happens is even though you feel like you're playing regularly in time, it will start to warp and you will hear yourself going out of time. Then, you come back in time to try to compensate for that and that's when you actually went out of time. There's a difference between what your body can feel is regular timekeeping and what your ear is hearing. So there is an ear that you develop for rhythm and then there's a physical development of rhythm. So when your ear hears that you're out of time, you probably weren't. And it was your correction, right? So time will warp your experience of hearing something rhythmic will actually breathe and warp. And my take on that within the context of using Amanita muscaria and drumming in ceremony is as you're drumming, you are actually lining up your insides and sort of getting in line and bringing your discordant pain and disharmony and emotions that you're feeling and things that are going on in your mind and in your body. That rhythm is helping to sort of shake things into alignment inside of you, reduce that chaos and get it sort of in a, in a place where you can start moving it up and out and that when things start to feel like they're going out of time that is you getting stuck somewhere on something emotional something energetic that you are then working and sifting back in time back into place and then it just keep you keep moving drums are so therapeutic and something that we are so disconnected from that all I can tell you is I highly encourage you to go to a drum ceremony, but it's even more important that you are actively on a drum, not just listening, but even just listening will start to bring you into a very trance-like state. This is a very human thing. It is vital to our mental health. And then, when you add to that millions of years of humans and this practice, it is written into the DNA, but also the planetary bodies as they move start to call us into memory of this, like it's time to clean it up and clean it out again. We're doing it every three months. It's getting close. You need to do it again. So that when that happens on a solstice and an equinox, you're just that much more supported energetically in a larger sense around you for that work to happen a lot easier, a lot faster. If you can't get to a drum ceremony on a particular event or you're dealing with some emotions and you want to move them out, I also highly encourage you to get a drum. 
And then I have a playlist on Spotify. I will link it in the description if I remember to do it. But try to go to Amanita Dreamer on Spotify. I have a cultural drumming playlist. It works better if it is in alignment with the bulk of your genetics and your DNA. If you are not on your ancestral land and you have been relocated and you, you don't know what your ancestry is, then use that drumming playlist and go through there and play different songs and, and listen to them and see which one you resonate with. And it doesn't matter if that's what your actual DNA is. There's a reason you're resonating with it. You know what I mean? Use that sort of like as a tool. And then when you find the music you like and the drumming you like, make more of that. Get a playlist of your own somewhere and start listening to that particular kind of drumming. Whatever's going to serve you best. But this is why drums are so important. There's fire gazing. That's a whole other thing too. And there's so much more I could say about this. We actually do this when I do ceremony, when I travel and hold ceremony. We actually go into the details of it and, and live it. It's something I want you to experience. You don't have to come to one of my ceremonies to do that. I'm hoping this video teaches you how to do this by yourself on your own or looking for drum circles in your area to be able to experience this because I want the earth to heal. It's why I'm here. I've devoted the rest of my life to this mushroom and what this mushroom is showing me and to the humans and to the earth and this process that we're all going through together. My work and my greatest wish is I raise your vibration. I teach you how to heal. I help you remember your humanity and then you go take that to your community. Mushroomvoice.com is how I pay the bills so that I can keep everything free. If you would please go there and purchase something from the store, join our community, or you can buy me a coffee. And thank you so much for being here. Keep watching all the other videos in the playlist. I love you beautiful people.